Welcome back to math. Today we are reviewing Unit 3 Bivariate Data in preparation for the semester test. So today's objective is, given a set of bivariate data, I can assign an R value, calculate the R value, and predict outcomes from trend lines correctly on three out of three problems. So all of the problems correct today. Look at those emojis. Think which one best represents you on bivariate data, and it has been a minute since we've looked at this, so you might need a refresher on what all these things mean. So first we're going to look at the correlation coefficient. Remember the correlation coefficient also is called the R value, and it had something to do with scatter plots. Remember we had axes and a scatter plot, and we would draw a best fit line, kind of like that, and an R value related to that association. So we're going to be talking about this association, describing it, and then calculating an R value as well. So first of all, we have a direction of an association. We have a positive or a negative direction. Remember, this is uh, the same as the slope. So a positive association is the same as a positive slope. Negative association is the same as a negative slope. And then we also had strength. Strength refers to how close the R value is to one or negative one. And it also refers to how close the dots are to the best fit line. So let's look at a few of these here. Which type of plot? What would, how would you describe this association? So it looks like it's going up to the right, and it's not very close to a line, so maybe this is moderate positive. How about this one? This one's going down to the right, so this is a negative, and it looks like it's very close to a line, so I would call this a strong negative. How about this one? This one doesn't look like it has any identifiable patterns, so let's call this one no association. And how about this one? This one's definitely going up to the right. It looks like it's moderately close fit, so maybe somewhere between a moderate positive and a strong positive. Maybe a moderate strong positive association on this one. All right, so which phrase best describes this association between variables x and y? Looks like we'd have a, a negative slope here, so it's going to be a negative association. And then I'd say these dots are pretty close to the same line, so this is probably a strong negative. So that's jogging our memory for association, strength and direction. Now let's talk about R values. Remember an R value is what we call a correlation coefficient. We call it an R value because we use the variable R. And it describes the strength and direction of an association. The values range from negative 1 to 1. We talked about that a little bit. The closer it is to 1 or negative 1 determines the strength. And then the sign indicates the direction. So what direction is this particular association we're looking at here? The line is going to go down this way. If I could draw a straight line. straight line like that. So this direction is negative, and that makes sense because we have a negative sign on our R value as well. Now the absolute value indicates the strength. So how close the absolute value is, or if we just take the positive piece of this, how close that is to 1 tells us about the strength. 
So what would you say the strength is of this association? Well, once again, if we drew this line, those dots are really quite close to that line. And also, 0.96 is very close to 1. So this would be a strong negative association. So here is our summary slide for correlation coefficient, also known as an R value. You can pause the video and take a screenshot of this if you don't have this in your notes already. So let's try sketching a scatter plot for these R values. So first let's do 0 0.8. <clears throat> well, I know this is going to need to go up to the right, and it's going to be a fairly strong association. So maybe something kind of like that. If we were to draw the best fit line, it would maybe go right in there. And these values are pretty close to the same, are pretty close to the line, so that's a good 0.8. So it's a pretty strong, positive association. So let's try the other one now. Let's maybe use a different color. So this is going to be R equals negative 0 0.9. Well, now we're going to go negative direction, and this is going to be even closer to the same line. So maybe something like this. If I were to draw that best fit line, it would maybe go right in there. You can see those dots are very close to that line, and it is going down to the right. So this is a negative association with a strong correlation. Just to reiterate our values, they range from negative 1 to positive 1. The closer they are to these ends, to negative 1 or to 1, that's the stronger the association. So this is a very strong negative. These are moderate negative. This is no association. Moderate positive, strong and perfect correlations. So which correlation coefficient best matches this scatter plot, would you say? If we drew a best fit line on here, oops, don't want to grab that picture, just want to draw the line. It would maybe go something like that. So is this first we asked, is it positive or negative? This is a negative association, it's going down to the right. And then how close are the dots to the line? I would say these dots are very close to the line, so we're going to call this a negative 0 0.94. You give this one a try. Which correlation coefficient best matches this scatter plot? Once again, we draw a best fit line that's maybe right about there. These dots are still pretty close to the line, but maybe a little bit farther away for, uh, compared to the last one. So maybe we're not quite at 0 0.94 now. Maybe we're more at like negative 0 0.76. It's still a negative because we're still going down to the right but it's a little bit farther away. The dots are a little bit farther away from the line. All right, so let's remind ourselves how we can calculate R. Calculate an R value. Um, we did not do this by hand because it was a pain. It's not, it's not a process you'd want to go through by hand. 
we're going to use Desmos to do this. So let's remind ourselves of the steps to do this in Desmos. We're going to click the plus sign and choose Table. And then we will enter the data, like so. It'll give us a table. We just type in the values. And then we type this magical little expression up here. This It looks like slope-intercept form. It's very close to slope-intercept form. But we changed a couple of things. We changed it to y1 and x1 instead of y and x. Those little ones refer back to this table, x1 and y1. So it's telling it to put in those values of x1 and y1. And then instead of an equal sign, we use this little squiggly line, which we call a tilde. So we have y1 tilde m x1 plus b. So we type that into Desmos. And then Desmos will give us our values. So it gives us an r value, which is what we've been talking about. And then it also gives us a slope and an intercept for our regression line. So it's nice, Desmos calculates both of those things for us. So if we wanted to write the regression line, we'd write it in slope-intercept form, with this being the slope and this being the intercept. Remember our notation here, y-hat. y-hat is our regression line from the set of data. So let's give it a try. Let's do one of these. So I'm going to open up Desmos over here in my other window. And I'm going to go through those steps. I'm going to open a table and type in these values. I'm just going to type them in over here while I have two screens. 67, 24, 26, and 25. All right, so here we are in Desmos. There we go. And I have typed in those values in a table. Remember, I went to plus, selected a table, and then typed in the values. Remember when you have a table, there's this little magnifying glass that says zoom fit, and you can zoom so you can see all those points of data. It'll zoom it automatically. So now I'm going to type that equation we talked about, y1 tilde mx1 plus b. That gives us an r value, a slope, and an intercept. And it also plots it for us, so you can see how close the dots are to the line. So what is the R value for this one? You can see it right here. It's negative 0 0.91. So our R value equals negative 0 0.91. This is a strong negative association. Now notice what we're comparing here, the temperature, presumably the outside temperature, and the number of heaters sold. So as the temperature goes up, the number of heaters goes down, the number of heaters sold goes down, right? It's an inverse association. One goes up, the other one goes down. That's what we mean by a negative association. That means the same thing. One variable goes up and one variable goes down. A positive association means they both go up together or they both go down together. So let's take a look at calculating another one. The table shows scores that eight students earned on four different quizzes. Describe the association between scores on quiz one and scores on quiz two. Use a scatter plot to solve. All right, so here are the names and here are the quiz scores. And we're looking specifically at quiz one and quiz two. So quiz one is right there. And then quiz two is below it down here. Quiz two is right there. So we need to compare those two sets of data. So once again, I'm going to do this in Desmos because I think Desmos is really handy. I'm going to open up a table and type in these values 10, 7, 6, 4, 6. And here we are. I type in those values. Notice I did have to 
invert the numbers, right? They were listed across, but I typed them down. So this is quiz one in X1, and this is quiz two in Y1. I'm going to click my magnifying glass so I can zoom to that data. And I'm going to type my equation, y1 tilde mx1 plus b. The r value here is positive 0 0.92, if we were to round to the hundredth place. And this one isn't even asking for the r value. This one's asking, what is the association? r equals, we said, 0 0.92. Well, what association would that be? Those dots were very close to that line, as the r value tells us, and it's a positive. So this looks like a strong positive association. All right, and then we also talked about making predictions. Remember, we used a regression line, those lines we just calculated in Desmos, to make predictions. A regression line is indicated by this little y hat. So y hat equals 7.96x plus 54.785. This regression line predicts the number of entries in an annual baking contest, where x is the number of years after 2010. According to the equation, equation about how many entries would be expected in the year 2022. So we need to identify what the x and y variables are. So x is, tells us right there in the problem, x is the number of years after 2010. So if we're talking about the year 2022, what is our value of x? Well, it's going to be 2022 minus 2010. So x equals 12 in this case. Now we just plug that value of x in to our equation and we get y hat equals 7.96, we leave a space for x, plus 54.785. I'll put my value of x in right there. And now I just need to put this all in my calculator. So 7.96 times 12 plus 54.785, I get 150.305. And it tells us to round to the nearest whole number, so we're just going to round that down, in this case, to 150. We expect 150 entries in the year 2022. So our steps there were to identify x and y, identify the number that it gave us, what variable we put it into, substitute into that variable in the original equation, and then solve for the other variable. So let's give another one a try. This equation, y hat equals blah, 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 models CD sales in the US in millions of dollars where X is the year. What were the sales of CDs in 2008? Okay, so what are our variables in this problem? X is the year, and it tells us this is year 2008, so that must mean X equals 2008, okay? So we plug that into our equation, we get Y hat equals negative 68.7, leave a space for X, plus 138457. My x value is 2008. And now I just need to put all of that in my calculator. Negative, oops, negative 68.7 times 2008 plus 138457. I get 507.4. Now that's not exactly one of the answers over here. I don't see a 507.4, but this says this models sales in millions of dollars. So this is gonna be $507 million, which is this answer right there, 507 million. 
And then finally, we had problems where we needed to interpret the y-intercept or the slope. So here we have a problem for a certain type of injury, the equation y hat equals 4.094x plus 6.255 models the number of minutes a patient can walk on a treadmill, where x is the number of sessions they had since their recovery began. What does the y-intercept of the equation represent in context? So first let's identify the y-intercept. This is slope-intercept form, so we know how to identify the y-intercept because it just follows the form y equals mx plus b. b is our y-intercept, which tells us this number right here is our y-intercept. So since that's what's, what it's asking for in the problem, we know that that number is going to appear, that 6.255 number. Or it looks like they rounded it to 6. These ones say 4, these ones say 6. So we can eliminate the ones that say 4. We know it's not going to be either of those. Now we just need to determine if this 6 refers to training sessions or if it refers to minutes. What is this 6 modeling? Well, the y-intercept is a y-value, right? That makes sense. It's where it crosses the y-axis, so it's a y-value. So we need to know what y represents here. Well, let's see. X is the number of sessions, and Y is going to be what we're modeling. So Y models the number of minutes. This is our Y value, number of minutes. So we want to look for the one that has number of minutes. And that's this answer right here. So that was interpreting our Y intercept. Remember, you can interpret slope as well. Slope is going to be our rate of change. So that is everything on today's objective, given a set of bivariate data. <clears throat> I can sign an, assign an R-value, calculate the R-value, and predict outcomes from trend lines correctly in three out of three problems. Look at these emojis, think which one best represents you.